Hello friends and welcome back on the second video. Um, this is the second part of the kitchen installation. It's a, like I said, a magnet kitchen installation in UK. In this video, you're gonna see us installing the doors. You're gonna see us installing the worktops, the splashback, the pelmets, the plinths, and so on. My colleague is just uh, installing the doors now. These doors are standard. They have uh, pre-drilled holes for hinges, so basically they are very easy to install. You just put the hinge in the hole, fix the hinges with screws, put the plates on the carcass and just clip the door on. Uh, they are uh, soft close and they just clip on. You don't have to put any screws or anything like that. I will not go in detail about the worktop installation or about any appliances because I think these are a bit more complex than the rest so I will try to treat this differently maybe do a video for the worktops and do a video for the appliance regarding the worktops I'll probably do more than just one video I will do a video for every single type of worktops that we actually installing um, at the moment we are installing about six different types of worktops they all have um, they all are different materials and they all have different um, methods of uh, installation so um, I will show you every single one as we obviously get them and we have to install them this kitchen has a normal laminate worktop you will see us installing that a bit later first tip for magnet kitchen installation is this integrated integrated appliances so dishwasher and washing machine yes if they are integrated you can't have any pipes or any cables or any sockets at the back because they will just not fit if you need to put a socket you have to put it somewhere else but not behind the machine yeah either washing machine or dishwasher the same with the pipes you can only have pipes to a minimum of four or five centimeters from the floor because the machines have a recess on the back and they just just gonna pass that um, pipes so the plumbing connections and the electric connections can be done in the nearest cupboard to the actually dishwasher or the, or the washing machine so this is how the kitchen looks like with uh, all the units installed all the doors installed you can see we finished the boiler cupboard we removed that uh, bracing piece and now you can access the flap it's all nice and secure nice and straight um, yeah you don't need more than that there's more than enough plumbers don't like these cupboards anyway I mean not the plumbers the gas men the gas engineers they don't like these cupboards they don't like when the boiler is uh, integrated in a cupboard uh, because obviously make it makes their life a bit more difficult by the way the plumbing that you just saw earlier has been there so we haven't done it it's a bit messy look a bit strange for me pipes going in the floor coming up from the floor plastic pipes joining into this pipe so anyway all we did is just uh, install those uh, two isolating valves capping those two copper pipes that they was coming from the floor they was for a washing machine they was not needed anymore because the washing machine and the dishwasher we're going to connect them both under the sink in terms of electricity and uh, waste and water when it comes to connect a dishwasher or a washing machine and have a socket under the sink you would have to check the regulation that uh, applies to your country or your area um, in UK you can have a socket under the sink and if you have obviously an upgraded uh, fuse board with RCD protection you can have a socket under the, the sink obviously try to do it so it's um, it's as high as possible basically
Okay, so I was saying to you in the last video that I'm gonna give you a few tips that only applies for magnet kitchens. So here they are. First and most important is, is this. You have your drawing and you have your product breakdown. Yes? So many people get this wrong because they start assembling the kitchen and then they realize that things are not matching. Yeah, it's very important when you installing a unit, you read the number that is on the unit. You go here, you see what it is. So let's say number two is LCA 115 corner ladder. And then you go back on here on a product breakdown. You find that LCA 115 and they will show you and they will tell you every single piece that goes into this unit if there are any inserts if there are any any mechanisms if there are any what type of hinges what type of frontal so everything you need to know will be here right so you will find sometime that you will have three eight hundred units and they all have different purposes so one is a corner one might go under the sink and one might go with drawers yeah so my one one of them might have drawers so you will find them maybe with two different codes in here but they will tell you exactly which one is for the corner which one which one is for the sink and which one is uh, obviously with drawers because when you assemble especially if you have a, a a kitchen that is a flat pack and you have to assemble the units first Obviously, you will have different instruction depending of where that unit goes. So if it's a hob or a sink unit, it will be different than a normal unit. So, like I said, very important. Read the drawing, see what number says there. You find it here and then you go back here and you check what you need to assemble. Also, when you have a, a tower unit that will um, housing that will housing a um, oven and microwave, yes, very important to check this code. Go here because they will tell you exactly how to to assemble it. Basically, those are mainly flat pack. When you're gonna assemble, you will have instructions, and they will say for every single code that you have on the instruction will be different. So they will give you the right code so if you assemble that unit regarding to the code you won't have any problem when you come to put the doors or filler panels everything so very important like i said read the drawing check the code and you will find everything here on product breakdown so trust me if you get this part right the one with the drawings and the product breakdown you won't have any problems i mean the other things are mainly like the rest of the kitchen installation like the rest of the brands you know you know it's the same carcasses you know it's pretty much the same this is where people are getting things wrong and this is where people are getting things messed up so trust me i've been there i've done that this is the, the right way to to do things another important thing will be regarding the carcasses magnet carcasses so the base units are literally 15 millimeter shallower than howdens or benchmarks so basically howdens has like 75 millimeters gap at the back the void for service magnet kitchens only have 55 yeah so it's about 15 20 millimeters less so bear in mind when you have integrated appliances or pipes or anything like that you have less space at the back than other brands. Another important um, thing will be regarding the end panels. So some of the ranges, they only have the panels at 870 millimeters height. So if you will have a worktop, there's a compact laminate, let's say, and it's just 12 millimeters thick. Um, you, your kitchen will be at 880 millimeters from the floor you can't have this any higher than that 
in this case you, you might you might have to order like extra tall panels if you need the kitchen to go higher so bear in mind some of the ranges they only have end panels like normal base end panels they are 870 millimeters high so check your end panels before you start the, the installation this image is you see us installing the worktops like I said we're not gonna go in uh, technical details about that um, I will do a separate video about worktop installation like I said there's a lot of information so if the video will be too long to, to have that in here probably before the worktop installation I will do a video regarding the time and what type of skills you need to have in order to do this installation because I feel like people are very very scared of uh, installing worktops you can see my phone into the camera is because I have uh, filmed this uh, worktop installation and I put the timer on I just want to show you how long it took us to install these three worktops so it's like a u-shaped kitchen it took us less than two hours you'll see that with obviously cutting installation gluing and everything so it's not rocket science like I said I have a feeling that people are running away from this they they think that is very very complicated and it's not so I will do a full video about worktop installation soon but before I want to introduce you into the actually um, work to see that is nothing major so I don't understand why people are scared to, to join worktops and one one funny thing is people are running away from um, composite worktop installation and personal I think the composite is even easier to install than, than a normal laminate the only difficult part in a composite worktop is if you have an undermounted sink then you have to be very careful because every mistake that you can do is obviously you can't fix that mistake so you will need a new worktop but apart from that cutting joining that's it's even easier than uh, this normal laminate we normally install about six different types of worktops so we install composite we install laminate like in these images we install um, compact laminate hardwood corian and max top max top basically is a combination between composite and quartz so it's like a plastic it's like a base under base that is made from plastic and a 12 millimeters of quartz on the top so you will see all that in the future as soon as we'll have them uh, we will show you how we how we install them right so now we are ready to install the splashback so this splashback is a plastic splashback with aluminium on the back and on the front so this splashback is like a herringbone pattern tile this particular piece goes under the under the extractor because it's a bit higher and then we'll have to have these long pieces on the left on the right and all around the worktops so everywhere we'll have these pieces and a bit of return on the window this particular splashback it's a bit trickier because we need to put the one under the extractor and then cut a small piece onto the left and one onto the right and obviously have the pattern matching so we'll need to kind of uh, centralize this um, this middle piece because it's not uh, it's not central you can see this um, this cuts from the left are slightly uh, smaller than the one on the right if I remember well so we need to centralize this piece cut it and then match the other ones and um, put them together and see how they look is it first time when we are installing this uh, type of splashback we did install we did install different splashbacks in the in the past but not this particular model where you have a herringbone pattern but let's see how it let's see how it goes okay so we did manage to cut them and uh, follow the pattern 
Now we have a different problem now. Uh, basically the one on the right is lighter than the one on the left. You can see you can see it is slightly lighter. I mean I think you can see on the camera. We couldn't see that before obviously as soon as we cut them and we just put them together one next to each other we could see that the one that goes under the extractor hood is slightly lighter than, than the one on the left. Obviously this is a um, quality issue so we're gonna have to obviously go back to the supplier and ask them to, to replace uh, one of them, it's probably the middle one. Uh, you can see here is a 5-6 millimeter plastic with a coat of aluminium on the front and on the back. It seems very decent materials, it's nice and easy to cut, it doesn't cheap. Um, so like I said, we just use it for the first time. Uh, yeah, pretty okay, pretty good. Like I said, we only have this color problem. So we'll see how, gonna, how we're going to, to fix this. I think the aluminium coating is to make it kind of fire resistant because obviously it does go behind the, the hob. So I think that's the only purpose for that uh, aluminium coating. Otherwise, yeah, like I said, very nice to cut. We had to obviously cut the sockets out. So we use a grinder with a metal cutting disc. It went in very nice, no chips, nice and easy and uh, fast. Another important tip would be regarding the units. So basically when you are installing a unit, just check the inside of that unit for any instructions. You will find that uh, sometimes there are things that you have to do before the installation. So any holes that needs to be pre-drilled, um, so obviously the holes will be on the outside of the carcass and you need to drill the specific holes before you put the unit next to another unit because otherwise you won't be able to do them. Um, some of the corner bases will have some shelves that will have to be installed before the worktops and so on so on so on. Check any instructions and see if things need to be done prior to the installation of the actual unit and obviously you have to do them. Many people are just putting carcasses together and then they find out oh this doesn't fit or oh, this doesn't go in so like I said check any instructions is very very important. Let me show you how I deal with this uh, worktop cut, with this uh, sink cutout. So, like you probably know, this uh, edge of the worktop that has been obviously cut for the sink will have to be treated with something that is uh, waterproof. I like to use this silicon, clear silicon, um, waterproof obviously. Uh, people like to use either lacquer or glue, whatever you like to use, it doesn't matter. You just have to make sure that whatever you, you use is waterproof. So don't use normal PVA or normal glue because they're not waterproof. If you use glue, use a glue that is waterproof. Like I said, I'm using silicon. I like it to be, I, I think it's a bit faster. I think it's, uh, you know, neater. If you do lacquer, you might have to do two coats. So like I said, do whatever you think that uh, works for you, but you need, definitely need to do something. So don't leave the, the sink cut out without any kind of sealant, because if any water will escape somehow in time, that will obviously destroy the worktop. So let me show you how the worktops looks. They all in. We have the sink in. I will show you how I silicon for the for the sink in just a minute. 
um, the splash back is all in apart from the left side which obviously needs to be replaced um, because of the color issue you see that is not that's not been uh, stuck down let me show you how I um, how I drill the hole for the tap on this ceramic sink basically these things have um, two pre-drilled holes from underneath but they're obviously not all the way through they only left about two three millimeters at the top because it's a reversible sink so you can hide it you can have it either left hand side drainer or right hand side drainer so you can turn it the way that you want and then you just have to obviously use the right hole for your application they have two stickers on either side make sure obviously when you have the sink in just obviously peel the one that you don't need and just leave the one that you have to obviously put the tap in i like to drill a few holes into this um, sticker and then take a big screwdriver flat screwdriver and just uh, easily with a hammer just tap it till it gets um, till obviously you do the, the hole then get some sandpaper or a file and obviously clean any sharp edges before you install the tap when it comes to tap installation if you have anyone around you that can give you a hand just to hold the top in place so you can obviously put a screw from underneath and secure it as great because sometimes these taps um, fall down and they can chip the sink obviously if there's no one around then you might have to you know do the best you can some of the taps like this one is, is pretty stable but some of them they have an obviously a long um, arm they might they might fall down and you have to obviously be careful with that one good tip about this would be don't over tighten the tap the tap screw obviously it might snap so do as tight as possible so the tap doesn't move but like i said don't overdo it because uh, it will it will snap been there done that trust me this is how i spread the silicon around the worktop so this particular sink is heavy it doesn't have any any fixings you just have to obviously put it in place and you're just going to stay there by his um, by his weight um, and when the silicon gets dry obviously it's not going to move anywhere and let me show you how i do the waste this is obviously a ball and a half sink. I'm just going to show you one. They both getting done the same. So I'm using LSX or uh, something similar. They are other products that they pretty much do the same. I prefer, I prefer this brand. I think it's slightly better than the rest. So obviously I just put a bit of silicon on this uh, this rubber. You see, yeah. So just a bit of silicon there. You can see. Then I do a bit of silicone over this uh, ring. Before I used to throw these rings and do the silicone straight on the actually metal part. But I find that this way obviously you don't use that much silicone. It's not very cheap this silicone. I think it's about seven pounds uh, a tube and it doesn't last very long. The reason that I like to use this one and not normal silicone like we use for the, for the sink is because this one doesn't get rock solid like the other silicon and the other reason is you can pretty much turn the water on straight after you you install the waste with the sanitary silicon i think you might have to leave it to dry for a couple of hours so we place the one with the rubber underneath underneath the sink you see so the part with the rubber underneath the sink yeah central and then we put this one on top on the top of the sink obviously and then we have this um, this screw that uh, connect them together and then we're just going to use that uh, plastic tool that they give us to to screw them together um, use it they they not always not all the brands will give you this uh, this key i like it because you can't you can't over tighten things with this is obviously a plastic and you will feel a lot more better than using like a flat chisel or something so basically you will feel 
when the RAM is tight enough. Having the silicon, obviously, I never had a problem of uh, linking uh, of uh, leaking waste since obviously I use the silicon. Sometime I had, but that was before to obviously start using silicon, like in my beginnings. Let me show you how I extended the hose for the washing machine. So basically the hose doesn't reach the sink cupboard where we obviously will have to do all the connections. So I installed a 22 millimeter copper yeah, inside that pipe. There's actually a, a straight coupling, but you can do a piece of pipe, it doesn't matter. I like this um, 22 millimeter straight coupling and is the one with the solder ring inside because it does give me a bit of uh, it does have that ring so when you put the jubilee clip is uh, it will do a much better connection but you can use a, a straight pipe that will do a good job too so the reason for using a pipe inside is obviously to have something to grab for that jubilee clip otherwise if you just put this rubber on top of that rubber you won't have a good connection I know there uh, is on the market as this um, connection, the plastic connection that you're supposed to use, but it will work for the one on the left. But the one that I'm just putting now over that is way too big for that connection. So no matter how much silicon you're gonna put and how much you're gonna tighten that Jubilee clip, trust me, that will leak. Maybe not every single one, but some of them will definitely leak. I've been there, I've done that. It took me, couple of trials and errors to to come up with this i mean it's it's not my idea i seen it somewhere uh, or something similar anyway so i said well i think this will work i tried it and it's been great i do this for a couple of years now never had a problem never had a leak um you see just do it like that put the jubilee clip on it and um, tight it and then after that i like to put some tape just normal electrical tape is just to keep the joint secure it doesn't have anything to do with leaks or anything like that i'll show you now in a moment there may be people doing obviously this different or uh, some people will have different hoses um, the problem with these hoses that i'm getting and i they all seems to be like that either if you get them from screwfix or you get them from selco or you get them from bnq they all seem to have one and bigger and this bigger end is the problem because you can't have it under the sink in this um, waste connections because they're way too big for those connections and they're way too big for these uh, connectors that you're supposed to use when you're joining two hoses together so um, yeah like I said this is how, I, how I'm doing this uh, it's been great for me it does work It's a bit trickier because obviously you have to do all this uh, if you if you want you can do it obviously before you install in the, the washing machine I didn't have this uh, hose so I had to do it after you will see me now wrapping this in electrical tape that's purely just to keep the joint together I mean I even even if it's very very tight with that uh, with that jubilee clip sometime obviously when you add silicon you, you find that they, they like to slide a bit so the other reason is because you know you might have someone coming and pulling the washing machine at some point for a service or for a repair and all that you don't want is obviously that hose to become loose so just adding a bit of uh, tape from one hose to the other will keep that um, joint nice and secure they never gonna come apart but like I said it won't help if you have a leak that obviously won't help at all A good advice would be to test the washing machine two three times before you put the plane just to make sure that this joint doesn't leak I can't tell you 100% how much water will be left on these hoses uh, after the use of the washing machine but I like to kind of elevate this joint so it doesn't sit on the floor so just if there is not if the hose is not full with water maybe there's no water in this uh, junction in this connection so obviously as you probably know 
the less water it is staying there, the less our chances of so it leaks. In these images you see us cutting the plinths and the palmets. We like to be very very effective or, or as much as we can. We like to obviously um, be faster and faster and better and better every day. I think um, this is the secret in, in having obviously a good business. The weather wasn't great. You can see some, um, some rain, you can see some clouds. So we just uh, did this uh, improvised table. So something that obviously we could just grab the tools and put them inside. Um, it's been a couple of times that obviously it was raining so we have to obviously take the tools, put them inside and then 10 minutes after put them back out and, and so on so on. So um, you see me cutting the palmet. So this palmet obviously you either cut them at 45 degrees or at 22.5 because mainly you have corners that are 90 degrees or 45 degrees. Uh, obviously either inner corner or an external corner and um, after you cut them we like to glue them with this uh, mitre bond so the two part glue one part glue and the other one is, uh, is the activator after obviously we glue them and we're happy with the actually joint we go ahead and uh, screw them to the carcass most of the palmets they require um, a countersink and a hole pre-drilled otherwise if you put a screw straight through without any countersink or any pilot hole uh, that palmet will crack uh, this particular one is very very difficult to to install i mean um, the part that obviously the screw goes in through and goes into the carcass i think is is like an end grain mdf so basically you have to drill a hole that is pretty much the diameter of the screw you have to countersink that and then you have to obviously install it um, onto the carcass. This is how the kitchen looks, nearly finished. Yeah, all the doors are in, palmets are in, you can see 45s in the corners. You see? bottom pelman doesn't need to be joined because the panel is overhanging just to obviously so you come with pelman straight into the end panel units are in the corner unit with the carousel I think this is a very clever piece of uh, piece of equipment this carousel dishwasher we have a missing handle we did that in the main time. In the meantime, washing machine. You see the splashback is all in. We use some tile trim on the corners because um, they didn't have any any trims. I mean, normal these splashbacks will come with some kind of trims, but not this one. So we had to use obviously the smaller tile trim that we could get. Um, this is obviously the boxing in that uh, covers the boiler pipes so we made this uh, this is not going to be fixed in any way no silicon no screws because it needs to be accessible all the time um, you see there's the pipes there there's the receiver there all the valves everything there is obviously in use everything is um, it's easy to access so then you just push it back it stays there it doesn't move um, and i think it looks nice and neat All we'll have left here is to come back when we have the new splashback, um, cut it and, and install it. Um, apart from that, everything is done. Like I said, we did install this handle. Uh, this is the bin. You know, the same, everything is so close. I just want to show you now the worktops so let me show you the joint very nice and neat you can't see any any gaps in between the worktops the same on the left hand side you 
you see no gaps obviously you can see the joint because the wood grain goes differently uh, but apart from that obviously there's no gaps there's uh, nothing there that you can uh, you can see thank you for watching and uh, i will see you next time on the next video